Okay, so we are live and actually we are transmitting to, to the Eurocon and I thank, uh, of course, uh, Shuni Wasawa for joining us and giving this presentation. And uh, the, the real presentation of Shun will be given in a few seconds by Claudio. Uh, I met Shun many years ago when we were uh, in Japan discussing tunes and I was trying miserably to help with my poor Japanese. And, uh, but it was a friendship that started many years ago and uh, has continued over the years and over the, the various uh, um, facts of life. Uh, Shun is not only a very accomplished programmer, he basically uh, developed many specific parts for tunes and then made the transition to open tunes as will be uh, described by him and by Claudio, but he is also a very, very good uh, um, a, a, a artist and he can draw and make a very different illustration to plot and uh, of cover pages, uh, the description and he has a very unique style that uh, I recommend you to check out. So um, he nicely has agreed to give us this uh, unique view on uh, the um, production within Ghibli and uh, how tunes and open tunes now are inserted in this production and all the tricks of the art. So before passing the word to Shun, I would ask to uh, Claudio to do the proper introduction since uh, you are the boss, Claudio. <laughs> Thank you very much, Marco. <laughs> Uh, at the end of the day, I, I guess I know Shun at least from uh, something like two decades. And uh, mm -hmm. so it's a long time. Uh, and it's a privilege for me to be able to introduce uh, uh, Shun to this conference. And uh, based on the discussions we had before, uh, I feel appropriate to let you know what the relationship was between uh, Shun and, and me and uh, talk a little bit about Toons, because Toons is the reason why we, we got acquainted and uh, we started working together. Um, as you might know, uh, Shun is with Ghibli for a long time, and he was one of the uh, original developers of the studio. Uh, the studio Ghibli selected, uh, thanks to Miyazaki and his uh, and the importance he gives to the quality of the line, uh, selected tunes, a product, an Italian product developed by my company. And, uh, and this, that's why the, the, the entire story started. He went uh, across the many years we uh, worked together and ended up with uh, Shun finally uh, launching and being the soul of initiative, which we appreciated very much. You might uh, see on the shoulders of Shun, uh, a panel saying open tunes. Uh, open tunes is an open, fantastic Shun. Uh, open tunes is an open source project uh, driven by Shun uh, and by the passion of Shun, uh, <laughs> which uh, finally will uh, is be able to provide a very professional solution. How much professional? Uh, just uh, think uh, who is using this software. Ghibli is using this software. So, mm. I mean, it's definitely a professional solution for the animation industry. And I believe that in this presentation, uh, Shun will uh, let us know more about that. Uh, for me, uh, that's all. I only want to take one, uh, this opportunity, um, before again passing the word to Shun, uh, to thank you, the organization, for the great job done. As I was saying uh, uh, on the private line to Marco, it was a bold initiative, uh, well conducted uh, in, uh, in a very safe way. So for one time, uh, it's a restart, which we are looking for from a long time. And uh, from the other time, it's, it's, a, it's, an, it's, a, it's a, a convention which is driven in a very safe way. Thank you very much to everyone of the organization, and especially to Flora and Marco. Mm -hmm. Shun, please, uh, let us know more about uh, you. Uh, there is one mm -hmm. more thing I want to say about Shun. I'm sorry. Okay. About that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes, uh, uh, programmers and artists don't talk very much, not, not get mm -hmm. acquainted very much, because, I mean, it's a different mind. Now, Shun is the kind of developer with a artistic yeah. background, and I believe mm -hmm. this sensibility had something more and permit Shun to better understand the needs. You will see the work he will present. It's... Uh, uh, certainly scientific driven, but for a, a explicitly for the emission of Shun, sometimes it's uh, the, 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 the creative part that uh, just overcome uh, the physics. 
which is a belief choice, uh, an artistic choice, and the ability for a programmer <laughs> to, to understand it. It's uh, one more uh, reason why uh, you are doing a great job, Sean. Please let us know more. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Claudio san and Marco san Now, let me start my presentation. Uh, my presentation titled, uh, can you hear my voice? It's okay. Titled, we hear it. Mm, okay, okay. <clears throat> my presentation titled, Developing Visual Effects for Ghibli Animation. I know this is a scientific, science fiction convention, but uh, to be honest, I will not be talking about science fiction but rather how science is utilized to create fiction. So I hope you will enjoy it. First of all, I'm Shun Iwasawa. I work at Studio Ghibli as a programmer. Actually, I'm the only programmer there as of now. And I have two main jobs. First, developing and maintaining the production software. The second, developing new visual effects. And today, I'm going to talk about my job, especially about the second one, developing new visual effects. So let's start at the beginning about the animation. Uh, if you look at one film still of animation, there are actually various stuff involved in its creation. Like this. Animators draw moving characters and bring them to life. A color designer decides colors of every part of characters fitting in the scene. And with these colors, ink and painters paint every single drawings. Background artists paint the background which defines the perspective of the world of the film. And finally, digital compositors composite the background and the characters, apply camera work and visual effects to finalize the animated film. And this is our production workflow in Studio Ghibli in more detailed schematic. And until the <laughs> Until the animation and background workflows, we work on paper. It's so-called analog workflows. And in the sub subsequent workflows, like income paint, color designing, digital compositing, we work on computers. And we use a software named OpenTunes for these three digital workflows, color designing, income paint, and digital compositing. OpenTunes is one of the 2D animation production software. It is based on the software Tunes, developed by the Italian company, Digital Video, the Claudio Sans company, you know. And one of the unique characteristics of OpenTunes is that the software is developed open source. Uh, one of my jobs is to develop and maintain open tunes to meet the demand by staffs in our studio. The other one is to develop develop the new visual effects. The visual effects are used in the digital compositing workflow. So let me talk about the visual effects. I would like to start with a very basic principle for sharing the same perspective with me. This is quite sudden, but let's think about drawing a tree. A tree usually has a lot of leaves. The problem is how to draw them. Draw a lot of leaves. For instance, you may draw the tree like, like this. Depicting a bunch of 
leaves as a single volume. Or if you would like to draw more in detail, you may draw every single leaves like this. This one is also cute. Looks like a tree in a picture book. However, if you'd like to draw a tree more realistic and natural, it would become a difficult problem that, oh, sorry. It would become a difficult problem that where and how to draw a lot of leaves. Doing a lot of things by repetition is what computer is good at. Computers are good at repeating work, following some provided, provided rules. In other words, before letting computers work, you need to give them proper rules. On the other hand, humans are generally not very good at repetition. You know, we will get tired through repeating work. Each output will contain unintended variation and distortion. I think these inaccurateness will make drawings attractive though. If you'd like to, if you'd like the computers to work without accuracy, you need to purposely, uh, purposely set the rules to be inaccurate. The rules for computer is programming code. Programmers like me write some special format of text like this and set the rules for how computer works. Now, let's put yourself in the mind of a computer graphics programmer. For instance, assume that we already have a drawing of a bare tree like this. How do you draw the leaves on the tree with computer graphics? As I said, computer works based on rules. So for instance, I will write a rule like draw 1000 leaves. The computer returns a result like this. Oh, what a mess. Why does this happen? Because the rule was not proper. It was too insufficient. So I modify the rule like this. Draw 1000 leaves around the tree. Actually, computer does not recognize which is the tree. So I define the tree as, as brown part in the picture. With a modified rule, the computer output would be like this. Hmm. It becomes much better, but does not look like a tree at all. The rule still seems to be insufficient. So I modify the rule again, like this. Draw 1000 leaves around the tree, except the trunk. The computer output like this. Hmm, finally, we got the best tree picture ever. But wait, check the leaves in close up like this. Every single leaves are in upward direction. This is unnatural. The rule still seems to have a room for improvement. It's not insufficient. Now we need to be back to basics. Let's think about Let's think about what are the leaves in nature in the first place. Leaves perform photosynthesis. In order to maximize exposure to sunlight, they try to minimize overlap with each other. Also, leaves come out from stems. There are some types of arrangement. Not only these characteristics, but also many natural rules can be listed for de defining the appearance of the leaves. So, after you observe and study the actual leaves in nature, 
You can add the natural rules to the computer graphics, like direction of leaves, sunlight, growth, propagation of water, etc., etc. Just by adding a portion of them, the computer graphics becomes more natural, like this. Hmm, it's it's very better. It's very nice. If you'd like to improve further, you already know how. Introduce more natural rules. Now you are at the starting line to be a visual effects programmer. To recap, developing visual effect is drawing a picture with computation. In principle, it starts with observing or studying the net natural phenomena and find underlying some mathematical rules. It is called the modeling process. Then, providing such rules to, to computer as programming code. Since they are based on the rules from nature, the output picture can have natural looking in some aspect. Nowadays, trees can be made with computer graphics so realistic like this. This is actually not my computer graphics, but this is uh, from a website of some commercial software for making 3D tree models. But wait, please remember that I'm working at the, at the animation studio, which is known for 2D animation. Is it suitable for our animation to make a photorealistic CG tree? I don't think so. If you put too realistic or too polygonish CG trees on the picture of hand drawn animation, they would not fit in. Audiences will easily distinguish the CG and other non CG parts in the picture. They will feel uneasy to such unnaturalness and cannot focus on the story. So when making CG for our animation, they need to imitate the hand-drawn style. I just talked about observing nature to reproduce the natural looking picture, but in Studio Ghibli, we also need to observe the style of hand-drawn animation and find the rules behind it in order to make CG looks like hand-drawn. This drawing, this painting, is one of the background paintings from our film. You can see there are many trees painted in it, and you may find some rules by observing them. The first rule would be about levels of details. The more the trees are close to the camera, the more they are painted in detail. In the cross view, you can recognize every single leaves. But in the middle view, the details are omitted and the shapes is more recognized by bunches of leaves, like this, like this. And in the distant view, the trees has very small details so that their shapes are recognized by whole body. The second rule would be how they paint the light and shadow. Looking closer, you can see the light and shadow parts are clearly separated. This is because in the background painting, they use poster paints, which are opaque watercolor. The painting is done in several steps. The details of the trees, like painting leaves, is done in in the final step. And in the final step of painting, they rarely mix colors and create gradation on paper. Based on these rules, I once tried to develop a software to make a CG tree in hand-drawn style. The actual painting is on the left and the computer graphics tree is on the right. How is it? <laughs> Mm, it's it's so so good. Unfortunately, this software has not been used for any film yet, but I still have hope for this. 
So mimicking the hand-drawn animation style is actually a policy for the CG department of Studio Ghibli, which is in order to fit in the picture and slightly enrich the picture. To achieve such policy, it is important that not only simulating natural phenomena, but also observing and trying to reproduce the styles of the hand-drawn animation. So this is the principle of our visual effects. From here, I'll briefly introduce the cases of my career development. I started my career in 2006 from the film titled Tales from RC. In the film, I developed a software to create a visual effect of wind in the glass. Wind in the glass. As you can see in the movie on the left, unfortunately, this is actual movie, not my visual effect. As wind blows, the wind pattern appears on the glass field. And the software I developed is on the light, like this. In traditional animation, such effect of wind is done by special effect artists special effect division. <laughs> they drew wind pattern frame by frame on the cell. Cell is a transparent seat for character animation, painting characters. On the cell with brush strokes, they drew wind pattern frame by frame. Like this. Mm -hmm. And this is another example, like this. So we need to, I need to mimic this style. So I needed to think how to imitate such hand-drawn style. In the software, I put a bunch of glass object. A wind pattern was designed by users using external software, which is not simulated, designed by users. And each glass object flaps according to the wind, like this. And in order to imitate the style of traditional animation, I put a brush tip texture, texture of brush tip on each glass. And this is the actual software. As you can see, there are so many switches and dials for delicate adjustment. And while viewing the result in real time, you can adjust the shape and movement of the glass object. From here, and you can make um, to, like this. Like this, like this. これが感じになって Like this. <laughs> From this software, this is the actual footage of the film. And another scene, this is not an actual footage of the film, but for testing the variation of usage of the software. Please note the, the edge of the hill and the moving flowers are also made by the same software. At at the later stage of the production, this tool was modified to be utilized for the effect of ocean waves and streamline as well. So let me show you that. You can see ocean waves here and streamline here. <laughs> These are also made by the same tool. 
So this is my development in Tales from a Sea. In the production of Ponyo on the Cliff by the Sea in 2008, I developed the software for making an iridescent color pattern of soap bubble. In the beginning of the movie, the magical soap bubble appears at the nose of the magical submarine. My software was developed to create a moving rainbow pattern for this bubble. The pattern was to be added on the highlight area of the bubble. The iridescent color of soap bubble is come from an optical phenomena called thin film interference. And this is the software. Inputting the animation of the, of the bubble drawn by animators. And based on the drawing, the software computes pseudo three-dimensional information, such as um, normal vectors or depths like this. And from such information, this software compute simulate thin film interference on it. Then get and, and adding some noise like this. And getting the rainbow pattern like this. And this is the result. The output image from my software is on top left, and the final composite footage is on bottom right. And please see how the pattern changes as the fish grows on the bubble surface. Okay. This is because the thickness of the bubble is changed according to the fish growing. And here are other results. You can see the trace of fishes growing the bubble as well. In the production of From Up on Poppy Hill, it is in 2011, I developed a software for making the reflected light and wave pattern of the sea, just like in this photograph. The story of the film was set in Yokohama. It's one of the largest port towns in Japan. So there were several scenes of seafront, so we decided to make this software. The developed, developed software was like the image on the right. The height of ocean wave was approximated by combination of noise patterns with different size. And the reflection was computed in real time. The out output image from my software is like this. And this is the final footage. When you look carefully here, <laughs> you can find the reflection is waving. It's very subtle, but I hope it made the scene somewhat natural by adding the movement. In the production of The Wind Rises in 2013, I developed a visual effect to reproduce bokeh, bokeh the out-of-focus effect. At that time, we had started to customize tunes, which, which was our production software, by ourselves. 
So the bokeh effect was developed as a part of tunes instead of a standalone software. So you can see the background is out of focus. It's blurred due to the out of focus. And this chopsticks is on focus distance. Bokeh is one of the effect for blurring the image, but it's not just any blur effect. Let me show you the comparison between bokeh and the most standard blur effect, the Gaussian blur. This is an original image with no bokeh or blur. And this is a, is a result with Gaussian blur. And this is the result with bokeh. Gaussian bra, bokeh. <laughs> Gaussian bra and bokeh. <laughs> Can you see the difference? The difference is more prominent at bright part like a street ramp. Don't you think that the bokeh result looks more natural? Compared to the Gaussian bra, in the bokeh result maintains brightness of the bright part. Also, you can recognize a uniform disk shape mm, here and here. Uniform disk shapes in the bright part in the bokeh result. This is actually a shape of aperture of camera. So what caused this difference? Roughly speaking, what we see with our eyes or what we take with the camera is not proportional to the actual intensity of the light. The relationship is logarithmic, which means that the light part, bright part has much more light intensity than we perceive. In the bokeh effect, the image is converted to the light intensity before blurring. The intensity at bright part becomes very high. So even if the light is distributed in some area, it becomes still bright. There are the images. These are the images from the final footage. The bokeh effect was heavily used in the movie. It is also used in the current production as well. Finally, I'd like to introduce my very recent work. We are now in production of a new film titled Kimitachi wa dou ikiru ka. Actually, English title is not determined yet, but the literal translation is How Will You Live? For this film, last year I developed a new visual effect for reproducing glare. The glare is perceived by human eyes or camera as a set of radial streaks around of the bright light source. I'm sure you have seen this kind of phenomena before in a photograph of illumination or when you see a bright car headlight in the night. So why these streaks appear? It is due to another optical phenomenon called diffraction. Since the light propagates as a wave, when the light encounters an iris, an aperture, or another obstacle, light bends, bends here around the corner of it, like here, like this. So the basic relationship between the obstacle and the shape, shape of the, shape of the glare is like this. As you can see, the light streak appears at perpendicular direction to each edge of obstacle, like this. So this is the um, optical principle of glare effect. But wait, 
Is it enough with simulating the diffraction phenomena for animation? Yes, before moving on, we need to know how is the glare effect represented in traditional animation? The glare effect in traditional animation had been created in the composite workflow. This is a camera stand, a device for the composite workflow in traditional animation. Here, stacking the, the background and transparent cells with characters on the table, then photograph together to form the final composited image. And we had two large, large camera stands like this in the basement of our studio. And we still use one of them for digitizing the background painting. It is quite large device. It's four meter high. You can see the character cell from Paul Corosso. And this is another photo of the camera stand. It's quite bright, but you can see the scene from Princess Mononoke. And another photo. The composite workflow was done in pairs. A cameraman and an assistant. And for this workflow, dust was the greatest enemy. They needed to be careful to eliminate static electricity, which will attract the dust for each material. So every visual effects works, works, visual effect works were done by using the camera stand. In contrast to working on computer, since the effect is recorded on photographic film, all they can do is add light on the picture. It is called multi-exposure. They can't remove or cancel the light already recorded on the film. Now let's see the effect in the actual film. This is a footage from Whisper of the Heart. Ah, let's see again. This car headlight. And in this scene, the setting sun through a window shows a glare effect like this. Let's see the scene again. This setting sun through a window. Don't you think it's very realistic. So how do they achieve this effect? In the traditional animation, we call this type of effect the backlight effect. For example, let's see how to make this picture with bright car headlight step by step. You can see the streak, right? Streak like this, very realistic. Firstly, stack the level of the car on the background, normally the car level and the background, normally with no light. And the first, first shot is taken with half exposure. Secondly, take almost the same picture again. But this time, but this time with light reflection on the road here. By doing so, the light reflection becomes semi-transparent on the film. It is called a double exposure technique. Then, we prepare for the backlight effect. This is a schematic of camera stand. 
the top panel of the camera stand table is removable and put the light under the table. Then prepare the black paper. Cut a black paper out of the shape of light source like this and put on the table. It is called a mask. Then scratch up a cell, which is transparent seat, with a sandpaper and make some parallel scratches in several directions and put it in front of the camera. It is called a scratched cell filter. By doing so, light through the mask spreads here at the filter due to diffraction and causes light streaks. So we put the mask is the shape of the head shape of the head right and the and the, also the scratch the cell filter, then turn on the light. The light looks like this. Then take the picture of the light. This is the backlight effect. Now, you have probably noticed, but in the traditional animation, they had utilized, utilized the diffraction phenomena just like in the natural world. So now we can move forward with confidence to simulate the diffraction phenomena for representing the glare effect. Mm, this is a detailed of computation, blah, blah, blah. So I will skip this. Now the glare effect is done. A unique characteristic of this effect is that these are compositors input the aperture shape like this for computation instead of inputting the light streak pattern itself. I think it makes the effect very versatile because this effect can generate various glare patterns according to the input aperture. For instance, six streaks, which is very common in the photographs taken by the camera with six blades aperture and the cross shape from the star filter like this. And thin and many streak patterns, detailed patterns <clears throat> come from an irregular circle like an iris of human eyes. And the streaks in random direction can be generated with randomly jagged shape with like this. And reflecting the demands from the digital compositors, I also enabled the effect to distort the pattern by using noise in order to obtain a symmetrical shape. Actually, it is physically inaccurate, but this could extend a range of expression. And the gray pattern is almost done, but unfortunately, I can't show you the actual footage of the film yet. So I hope you will find the effect when the movie will be released. The conclusion, hand-drawn animation represents the beauty of nature by handwork. It also has a unique style. In my opinion, developing the visual effect is also trying to represent the beauty of nature but by implementing the natural rules as programming code instead of drawing tools. And we need to keep in mind to mimic, imitate the hand-drawn style in order to fit the computer graphics in the style of Ghibli animation. Now, uh, let me quote the words from Fred Brooks, a legendary computer architect he mentioned as follows in his article, uh, computer science isn't a, is not a scientific discipline. It is an engineering discipline. The distinction he makes is that 
scientists build things in order to study, and the engineer studies things in order to build. Computer scientists engineer abstract objects. That is, they do not engineer objects that directly serve human needs. Instead, they construct tools that server users need. In effect, the computer scientist is a toolsmith. I quite agree with him, and I'm just thankful in being able to work as a toolsmith with skillful artists in Studio Ghibli. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is the end. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Shun. Uh, thanks a lot for this very comprehensive uh, talk. And uh, uh, I hope that uh, I, uh, I hope that uh, everyone uh, was uh, uh, listening and that they have many questions. So let me ask uh, if Adriano uh, uh, on the floor has any question for you and let me unmute his microphone. Otherwise I have many questions. So, so I am, so I am. <laughs> so you start Claudio maybe while Adriano Okay, get, get I have a question. Questions. Okay. I have a question for you, Sean. Uh, first and foremost, thank you very much. Uh, it was uh, crystal clear, very good presentation. And I believe it was a clear contribution to let a lot of people understand how things are done in the composting world. But there is something which is happening before that. And I was curious about maybe having um, some insights from you, how it works. Um, imagine that you get a scene of the movie, which will require digital composting and special effects. What is the approbation process? So uh, what happens? Of course, you start from the storyboard, you, you gather around the table, you discuss uh, the effect. Uh, what is the process? You mm -hmm. develop and then get approved. Uh, who is involved? Okay. Um, okay, the movie in, in, the, in the Studio Ghibli, all the production is started from the storyboard drawn by the director. In, in this case, in the in the latest film is a storyboard by Hayao Miyazaki, Miyazaki-san, director Miyazaki. And uh, for each scene, uh, they discussed how to make the visual um, impression of the scene. And about the developing the visual effect, it starts from the. Um, we already we we always uh, from the request by the my boss. He is a director of digital imaging. Okui san. <laughs> Okui san, of course. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's a he's a chief of digital compositing. And he's irresponsible to make the final image. And he over, he o um, he always have the uh, image of the final final image to achieve. So when when he imagine something some some difficult scene which is difficult to uh, realize with uh, conventional visual effects he asked me to develop some new effects so i'm not i, I rarely talk with director miyazaki <laughs> directly but i communicate with uh, okui san he's a director of digital imaging a chief of digital composite very much to match his needs and digital compositors. So this is a process of my development. So the digital compositors are contributing to make the effect more and more effective. Sorry about this joke. That's right. Uh, and so at the beginning, 
uh, who is an has the vision should i say he interprets mm. whatever uh, should be done and yeah, yeah. then uh, from the open discussion with you maybe there is some software to be developed and then this software goes to the compositors and the compositor use them and maybe come back to you with changes that's right that's right changes. so many times yeah <laughs> yeah i can imagine <laughs> and actually the effect is uh, first we release very uh lovely sort of beta version <laughs> to them and is it uh, another question is there any any else uh, um of course, uh, this is about uh, uh, digital compositors. But uh, do you have, uh, do you involve in those discussions sometimes other people from the studio? For example, if we talk about color palettes, uh, or if we talk yeah. about, uh, so there are different people working with you in different moments, uh, depending on the kind of effect. I assume for for developing visual effects or other features no. in Open Tunes. Uh, I would say uh, for developing visual effects, where the color um, has a, an important part. I think it's uh, for developing visual effects. I think it's more rather uh, focused in digital composite because its uh, workflow is quite waterfall, and uh, from the after uh, in the digital compositing process. We mostly talk inside of the digital composite division, mm -hmm. and also, of course, I communicate very much with uh, income painters as they use Open Tunes as uh, income paint tools, and they always demand or there is the reporting the report bags or other something like that for Open Tunes. So I need to communicate them as well. So that's my daily work. <laughs> hmm. Marco, I have another question, but maybe I'm just the only one talking. So ask us <laughs> the question and then we will ask the floor then. Go ahead, Claudia. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, um, okay, it's about open tunes. I believe no. that uh, it um, is now clear that uh, you are using uh, open tunes for internal production. So you are using this this solution, which which is an open source solution for actually building the, the 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 next ghibli movie am i right mm -hmm. so in other words uh, anybody in the world uh, can download a free copy of uh, of open tunes uh, and use exactly the same software which is well maybe not exactly but uh, the same software which is used by studio ghibli to release their next movie it is correct yes it's almost correct it's exactly right uh, well, now we already upload the gray effect in open tunes or you can just download the latest version of the software it's the gray effect is already included in it so so it's <laughs> just a matter of reporting into the software the latest development which doesn't take place immediately but at the end of the day after a few months yeah, the, the, anybody willing to download the, the solution will be able to use exactly the same effect because in the meantime you will have updated the version right that's right um i i said almost was because uh, some effect was not included in the release version of open tunes as it's quite um specific <laughs> for our movie so it will be it may be released after the release of our film, of but course. it's still keeping <laughs> our in-house. But, uh, you know, the gray effect is 100% 100, 100 open source. So for That's today, you fantastic. can start to use it. It's the uh, same effect. My last question, and then of course it will be for Marco. My last question is, uh, according to your knowledge, uh, how much uh, the Japanese animation community is using open tools? Is, is it a tool which is mm -hmm. quite used uh, everywhere in Japan or still needs to be uh, maybe uh, better known in order to become an, an industry standard? What's the mm -hmm. situation there? My feeling is that it's slowly, but it's growing. <laughs> And they, it is, it is quite 
delicate situation in Japanese animation industry, but for some reasons, it is difficult to completely migrate the software for making animations because in the in Japanese animation industry, they work uh, outsource each other. <laughs> so it's difficult for one studio um, to migrate the software due to the, you know, the compatibility of the data or other reasons. And, but I feel OpenTunes is growing in, as a partially in the workflow, they can introduce OpenTunes such as pencil testing workflow, which is to, um, it is for animators. Pencil test workflow is for animators taking the drawings by camera and making the movie from it for previewing their animation. This is mm, for such workflow, they started OpenTunes very much because this is, I think this is the best software for now. And also other purposes, they started to use OpenTunes as well for from the some specific parts of the production. I recently heard that uh, in the latest film of Evangelion, OpenTunes they also used in for some workflow <laughs> as well. That's very I'm ha happy to hear that. <laughs> so it's slow, but I think uh, it will grow and uh, also while I keep developing the software, improving the software, I think it will last for a long time. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if there are questions from the floor. Let me unmute Adriano. Please go ahead, Adriano. Okay. Um, can anyone ask questions? Okay. Okay, there's one. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. How many time uh, you spend uh, about to make the glow animation in uh, the movie? How many time do you spend to make what? Uh, the effect, the effect. How many time do you spend to make what? Glow animation. The effect, the glow effect. The glow effect, uh, yes, okay. Mm. Glow animation. <laughs> Did you use it just for one scene or maybe it was used uh, across the ah, entire movie? Ah, ah. Mm, to, the effect was actually the, the effect was originally developed for one, one or scene. two specific <laughs> scene, but uh, I think it's, as you know, it's versatile. The effect becomes quite versatile. So I think it will be used for other scenes eventually. <laughs> but actually this one is, um, originally it was for one or two scenes, which is very important. Some bright streaks appears in that such scene. So I think you can easily find the scene when you see the movie. <laughs> And how is going the movie? How is it going? Is it on time? Are you on schedule or late? When will be will it be released in mm. Japan? <laughs> so you asked when will the new movie is released? Uh, actually, I I have no idea <laughs> for that. <laughs> I think all staffs in the studio want to know the release date. <laughs> actually. Um, because uh, mm, 
you know that he trying to direct them Hayao Miyazaki trying to everything for the film this time oh. because I as you know uh, this time the director Hayao Miyazaki declares that this is this will be their last feature film for him yeah this is every time as, 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 as always yeah as as always as 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 we don't trust him anymore <laughs> <laughs> that's right but uh, he tries to do everything he would like to imagine he imagines so um, it takes much time than other previous movies so we all have Actually, we all have no idea the lady state of the movie. But at least you know how, how far you are in the production schedule, because I believe that you have a certain number of uh, minutes in footage already done mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. adapts which are still to be done. So are you half away? Or yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's already past the half away, oh, okay. I think. And, uh, but mm, we, <laughs> in, in, our studio, we talk with my colleague when we we'll finish the production. We expect, I'm sure, but the, um, for in the computer graphics division, it will be the um, <laughs> next year, spring <laughs> next year, or so. But we have no idea. <laughs> okay, I mean, uh, good luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. But we really enjoy the production. It's I'm very sure. fun. But what about director Miyazaki? I mean, I believe that uh, he, mm. I mean, he's a master, uh, and of course, it doesn't mm. doesn't need any, any any introduction and presentation. But he's an old man as well, still working in the studio every day, or coming yes, from yes. time to time. Yes, so. he come. It's amazing that uh, he come every day in studio and uh, drawing all the day. You know, he's thought of the. He's a director, the chief of the movies, and uh, he checked every scene of the movies. No, yeah, he's I quite. Think that this is why he's still young in, <laughs> in the mind. <laughs> yeah, he's still passionate <laughs> and has me. the imagination in his mind. It's really, you know, awesome, <laughs> I think. Mm. Let's see if there are other questions. This is Flora. Is this Flora? I cannot see her. Uh, if there are other questions for I think floor. she yes. is Flora. This is ah, Flora, Flora. Flora, the, the oh. mastermind oh. of the whole organization. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are no other questions, so I pass the mic to Flora for the final words. Thanks. Hello, Shun, Shun San. I finally can see you, and I. I uh, really like to thank, first of all, Claudio uh, for coming here and the, the panel you did yesterday was wonderful. Um, thank Shun, thank you so much. It was so interesting. Uh, I can tell you that up to now, yours has been the panel with the most attendees. So thank you very much. We really appreciate it. And we really hope that soon, you will be able to come maybe live here in Italy and do a panel again with us. So thank you very, very much from all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So I hope to see you face to face. Yeah. Maybe, maybe next time. <laughs> Thank to our wonderful Marco, who is not here with us, but you're here with your heart and soul, and we are with you, and we are waiting to see you very soon. Thank you so much, Marco, for arranging this. It was a dream.
ciao also to Evan, which I'm sure is looking at yes. this uh, strike. <laughs> so, ciao she, Evan. She is the care. real uh, grey eminence between Ghibli. So <laughs> I hope that Evan, you are listening to us and we hope to have you soon also. Uh, uh, okay, bye bye. so if there are no other questions, I think we can uh, thank Shun again and uh, we hope to have you soon. Thank you, Mark uh, Sound. And also, also Claudio, that uh, that's how we may, met and our friendship started. So thanks, Claudio, for coming both yesterday and being here with us today.